whenever a new theory is proposed that completely changes people's way of understanding how the world works, there is naturally a lot of resistance among many people who refuse to accept the evidence. Think of Galileo who was persecuted in the 1600s for daring to suggest the now common knowledge that the earth revolves around the sun. Interestingly, this was actually a very old discovery by ancient Greek astronomer Aristarchus of Samos who presented the first known model depicting this. Even though the Bitcoin power law theory is not nearly as old considering how young Bitcoin is, it was still first presented over 5 years ago and we now have even more data to back everything up. Unfortunately, many Bitcoiners, even when well prepared professionally in different fields like economics or even engineering, believe they can attack the theory by trying to debunk its first principles. These attacks are mostly based on being unfamiliar with the Bitcoin power law theory and often even have serious logical fallacies. Recently, one of these Bitcoiners named One Digit expressed his ideas on what he thinks the common reactions by Bitcoiners may be against this understanding of Bitcoin. Some of these concerns are valid and understandable, but many are motivated by a desire to believe and wishful thinking that Bitcoin can go through exponential, unbridled growth. In our opinion, this desire is selfish because, according to our understanding of Bitcoin, this would mean something is seriously broken with Bitcoin's inherent protective mechanisms. 1. Humans are special. This is a typical geocentric argument implying that we are special and not part of nature, so math doesn't apply to us. This argument is based on unfamiliarity with the vast literature that shows power laws occur in many human-made phenomena, in particular those involving social networks. Cities, for example, are such systems. Economists tried but ultimately failed to understand them. We needed physicists to discover that cities and other human phenomena follow power laws. Geoffrey West has explained this well in many of his presentations. One of these can be found in the description. 2. It is just drawing lines and stupid technical analysis. This argument is based on not understanding that our approach has nothing to do with technical analysis and it is not just drawing lines. In fact, we believe that most technical analysis is extremely flawed and closer to astrology than science. The method of using a log-lock graph to reveal power law relationships in nature and in human-made phenomena is an established approach and hundreds of scientific papers are based on this method. It is not even about drawing a line, it is about revealing that a phenomenon demonstrates scaling properties. Regression is mostly used to derive the power that often reveals very important consequences and insights about the mechanisms that create the underlying power law relationship. For example, the fact that the exponent of Kleiber's law is three-fourths reveals insights about the economy of scale in metabolism and the fractal nature of physiological networks. The reason why we draw these lines is so we can better understand what is behind the mechanisms that generate such power laws. 3. What about the efficient market hypothesis? This argument boils down to it is economics, stupid. Therefore, physics cannot apply. The Bitcoin power law theory claims that besides local stochastic processes that are similar to those of normal assets and financial instruments, Bitcoin is deterministic and follows processes akin to natural laws. The efficient market hypothesis therefore doesn't apply. It is like telling someone that gravity is what makes bodies fall toward the earth and getting a reply based on Aristotelian arguments based on the four elements that go to their natural resting places. These ideas are not valid for Bitcoin. The scale invariant properties of Bitcoin will always adjust to any attempt to game the system. The only way to make a living out of mining is to find a tiny edge of profitability by making the operation as efficient as possible. Bitcoin's growth happens due to adoption, which can be expressed with the cube of time and therefore has nothing to do with the efficiency of the markets. Bubbles are the only time when the price can decouple from the power law but then it returns to its general trend. 4. All models are the same. This is too simple to explain anything. This argument doesn't understand that the simpler the idea, the more likely it is to be true. 
In fact, a few of the criteria used by physicists to find the truth are beauty and simplicity. As physicist Geoffrey West says, physics is the science of simplicity. Or as Einstein says, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Power laws are simple, explain the data very well, have causative power, and are completely natural if not actually expected and a matter of course for a system like Bitcoin that is full of iterative loops. It can be shown both mathematically and logically that power laws are a result of processes that are based on the output becoming the new input. Hash rate now influences the hash rate of the future, adoption now influences the adoption of the future, and so on. These correlations imply causation according to our theory. 5. Power laws can explain planets, metabolism and animals, how cities grow, social networks, and everything else but not Bitcoin because they want it to be exponential. This is another geocentric argument. All of the proposed mechanisms of our theory are well established and make sense in the context of Bitcoin. For example, Bitcoin is a network so Metcalfe's law is expected here and it is even better that we also have empirical evidence of this. Dr. Santostasi discovered that Bitcoin followed Metcalfe's law in 2014, but now there are peer-reviewed papers that also confirm his results. The other proposed mechanisms all make sense and are valid scientific hypotheses. It is up to the skeptic to disprove the theory, but for now, this could only be done with future data, which can either falsify the theory or give it more evidential support. Why are we confident that we can extend our models into the future? The answer is simple, scale invariance. Learn more about this principle in our scale invariance and why Bitcoin is predictable video. 6. I am not familiar with the full theory, so I will come up with a random counter-argument. If you wish to criticize the Bitcoin power law theory, we urge you to at least be familiar with its tenets. The explanation of why we have a growth of t to the power of 3 is one of the main points of the theory and is again supported both by theoretical arguments and empirical evidence. The difficulty adjustment mechanism and the risk involved in the investment are examples of curbing mechanisms that protect Bitcoin from unhealthy exponential growth. If you wish to learn more about the Bitcoin Power Law Theory, you can watch our Bitcoin Power Law Theory video. That link can be found in the description as well. 7. It is crazy and arrogant to make theories about Bitcoin because it is not science. It is a bold endeavor to make a theory of anything, and even more so, for Bitcoin. This is how scientific understanding of anything progresses, by making theories. This attempt should be considered an admirable effort to understand this fascinating and important social, physical, and economic world experiment. The theory is not yet fully refined, and it is amenable to improvements and expansion. Of course, attempts to test it and falsify it are necessary and welcome. In fact, despite the funny thumbnail, we actually welcome questions and suggestions because this is how science evolves. But dismissing our theory because it is not humble to make theories of Bitcoin is short-sighted and misguided in our opinion. We have also added some other misconceptions and questions that we see quite often. 8. This model will be just as wrong as the stock-to-flow model. It is important to note how different our approach to understanding Bitcoin is compared to the stock-to-flow model. According to our current understanding, Plan B was actually first inspired by Dr. Santostasi's power law model, but then radically changed it to the point where it has very little predictive power. In fact, we can already see Bitcoin's price failing to meet the expectations of the model, and this divergence will only become worse as time goes on unless new alterations are made to it again. Dr. Santostasi cracked the S2F model and discovered that it is essentially noise that reveals nothing specific about Bitcoin's behavior in general. We even reproduce stock to flow using soccer winning prizes. If a model can predict everything, then it cannot really predict anything and likely has many false positives. 
It is like saying that your machine can tell what illnesses you have by analyzing your blood sample, but then it starts diagnosing everyone with HIV. You could say that S2F is the Theranos of Bitcoin models. The vast majority of people do not understand the mechanics behind the model, so it has become very popular due to its overly bullish projection. It can actually harm the scientific world when non-scientific predictions that are thought to be scientific finally turn out to be false. If we ever need to change something about our model due to new data coming in, we will be fully transparent about it and explain the exact scientific thought processes and numbers behind it. However, as of now, our model has held up very well over the past five years and we expect this trend to continue in the foreseeable future. 9. What about comparing Bitcoin to other currencies or precious metals? Does the power law price model fall apart? We have nothing against comparing Bitcoin to other forms of money. They would just produce power laws with very similar exponents due to most fiat currencies and precious metals being very stable relative to Bitcoin. Even gold has still only doubled over the last decade or so, while Bitcoin has moved up six orders of magnitude, or in other words, multiplied by a million times in the same time period. The only problem is when you start comparing Bitcoin to hyperinflationary currencies, because you are essentially introducing noise to the chart due to there not being any stable enough store of value to compare against Bitcoin. An analogy to comparing Bitcoin's price action against the failing currency in an attempt to disprove that it follows a power law is like saying that cows can fly because in the rare event of a tornado that can indeed happen for a brief moment. The general statement that cows do not fly still remains true. Wishing for hyperinflation is also very naive because even if you hold Bitcoin you would only become rich relative to a worthless currency. Bitcoin would just protect you from losing your life savings as it adjusts to the changing inflation rate. However, it would not protect you against war or other terrible events that could happen as a result of such an event. 10. This time it's different because of institutional adoption or a black swan event. Power laws are incredibly resilient systems and every time people have thought that Bitcoin will break its long-term trend, Bitcoin has proven people wrong. For example, the COVID crash brought Bitcoin right back down to its power law trend, while markets like oil went negative. Conversely, people have always thought that Bitcoin will keep behaving bullishly during bull market tops by using excuses such as institutional adoption. If anything, every consecutive top has diverged less from the overall power law trend than the previous one in a predictable fashion, which allows us to project future peaks as shown by our full model. This is because it takes more and more money to move the price in a bigger market. Even the ETF inflows are barely enough to keep Bitcoin on its power law path. We hope this video has cleared up some of the biggest misconceptions regarding the Bitcoin power law theory and if you have any other questions we have not yet covered feel free to ask them in the comment section. We will try to answer them to the best of our ability. If you wish to support the making of our videos, research and indicators, you can join one of our very affordable Patreon tiers and gain access to our Power Law TradingView indicators that help you understand where we currently are in Bitcoin's market cycle. In addition, you get to join our active Discord community, teeming with fascinating discussions and online lectures. We're looking forward to meeting you on our Discord server. This is Saverio speaking and as always, Thanks for watching.